So I've been updating my switchless kernel switcher project since they are in the wind nowadays after a video by Adrian Black and then uh, Sven had made a version also and I thought it needs some improvements. So the main improvements is really it has an 80 tiny now. It's not just pick microcontroller and with the 80 tiny you can basically use a uh, Arduino ISP to program it, which is really nice. Like, it's really nice to have in your toolbox. Now the 80 tiny is very easy to program. What you need to do first is to put this a uh, sketch into this one, then hook up some wires, not so many as here, and then you need a library for the 80 tiny, and then you can program it in Arduino as you are used to. I can really quickly show you. Uh, so first you go to File, um, Examples, Arduino ISP, and then you upload this sketch to your Arduino. And when that's done, you must have the libraries. That's all documented. And this is the setup. And then you basically just program. That's it. So should program any minute. There we go. So yeah, so I've been having fun with programming the AT Tiny, and this time I'm doing things a little a bit different. I have also redesigned the boards in KiCad, and this time I've also made a uh, short board version. <clears throat> something I should have done a long time ago and in Sven's project he had a great idea to use a AND gate such that you don't waste uh, kernels because on the shortboard you need to include basic next to kernel and what I used to do before is to put basic between all the kernels so you don't have to do that here yeah, so how this works is that you have the socket and the pins going down into the Commodore 64 or 128 and then you have the extra address pins that only exists on the EPROM so they are the banking you are selecting so you have eight banks or four so the first bank has to be basic and A13 is zero when there's basic and one when there's kernel and if you feed that up here, what happens in an AND gate when you get zero on one of the inputs? Well, then the in other input is blocked and the output is always zero. So you will get bank zero. <laughs> so if it's basic, it goes to bank zero. It doesn't matter what's been selected on the microcontroller side, it goes to zero. And then when it wants kernel stuff, it goes to the bank selected here, which is really brilliant, I think. So there's a catch, you can't have bank zero here though, because that's not possible. So yeah, so that's new. So also you can now have the original LED and you can have the RGB LED or not at the same time. And then you can have the uh, programmer here. The last improvement is X room. I've spent a lot of time of, and documenting this so this should be easy to build and um, you can see here actually I, I had trouble making this myself but uh, now it's much easier because now I know which correct order I'm supposed to solder everything so because uh, pins are covered when you don't do it in the correct order anyhow also you can then, I also put all the longboard versions, so you can figure out where to get your restore, reset and X-Room, if you want X-Room anyway. So X-Room, uh, you can have an X-Room reset, if you hold restore uh, for more than 5 seconds, it go into X-Room reset. And the difference here is that if you have a machine language program, um, uh, which 
sort of change i think i'm not sure yet but i think it changes the um, way the machine resets i think it changes the reset vector such that when you press the reset on the cartridge it will just jump back to the place or not just the cartridge but just any reset button it will just jump to back to its program so and a way to fix that is to also pull on x room when you can sorry if i'm puffing on the microphone <laughs> Now this short part thing has been a bit of a nuisance for me because I, well, it means that I need so many firmwares and also I want one for just blinking and one for four banks or eight banks or short board or long words. That's four. Well, the blinky thing is something you have to set in uh, programming. But So what I've done is that if you cut the power, turn off the computer, hold the restore key insert power and you keep holding it for five seconds like this so you start blinking white uh, it's not white because I pulled out the red one when I program I have to do that so you can see there's a long and a short that means uh, there's a long board <laughs> that means uh, the old motherboard format or formal factor and short means uh, four banks. So if you click, now you should see long, long. So that's uh, long board and eight banks. Then there's short, long, short, short. And then that's short, long. So what does the short, long look like? Just hold in the restore key again, then the program starts. So now you can see we will have seven kernels Holding it to return to menu, and then you can cycle through all of them. Green, blue, cyan, red, yellow, uh, purple, something. <laughs> Maybe this is a bit overexposed. So, And then it resets into that kernel. But uh, I will put it back in the mode I usually have it in. That is, I have to hold the restore again. <laughs> So the, the point of this is that you can uh, have one firmware program the thing there. So let's get long and then short. And then, there it is. Just hold it. So now it should be long board and four banks. So that means in the long board you can have four kernels. But in the short board, you only have three. I, um, I don't want to show you that right now because, let's see, red, green, blue, cyan. Red, green, blue, cyan. Those are the four. So this is the prototype. This is the 1.13 version, the old version, which I converted into the new 1.20 version. So. And you can see here, I have just a socket for my little 80 tiny, which is not original, as you can see. It's an SMD on my uh, adapter board. But anyway, that's the way I tested it, and this is the real board that I ordered. So, and it works fine. Also, the other difference is that you have all the pins on a row here. Uh, this X-Room thing I talked about, everything is documented in the PDF file anyway, but uh, when you hold the button, and wait a moment, this one will show that it resets. But when you hold it for that long, it will also do an X-Room reset, and that's this light. The reason for it not lighting up is because you have to use a high voltage programmer uh, to turn on that feature, <laughs> because this one it's a bit complicated, but you only have six IOs on the 80 tiny, um, 85, and the last IO is reset, and then I can't no longer develop using this because this is an ISP programmer now, and it needs reset on the microcontroller to program. So how do you do it? Well, you have to dis disable reset, and I can show you that quickly. So, in Cut power, you can uh, pull it out, right? So it's in the 
programmer for the hex file we are going to use in mini program it's a bit tricky it's actually in here somewhere <laughs> it's in a temp folder that's really weird with Arduino but anyway there it is Control C okay let's see if I can do this live uh, open then down here just paste the uh, path then you find the hex file you just uh, compiled OK, and uh, you have to, of course, select the correct microcontroller. Now, for this XROM to work, you have to go into config. And you have to... You also have to check that you have clock divide 8, because it runs at uh, 1 MHz. If not, it will go into software trap, so you will see uh, some blinking on the red. But anyway, that's a digression. <laughs> So what you want to do here is to disable here, and then you program it. You can also just program just a few bits, but uh, let's go. So let's pop it back in and see what it does. All right, so it's back in. So during normal operation, you just hold it, start flashing, and you select the kernel you want. And you can see you get a flash here. That means it does a reset. But now, if I hold it, so you got both reset and XROM. That does only work if you have programmed it in one of these, because you have to disable this thing. So now I can show you that it no longer works to program the thing. So I hit program, and then tries to find the board and it says device not found. The reason for that is it can't cannot longer re hold it at tiny reset. So just to let you know about that. But anyway, it's a bit fun though. So I will put it back because uh, I like to develop with this setup. It looks very messy, but uh, bear in mind, it's still this, just this circuit here with an ISP connection or a SPI connection. SPI connection, but what I have done is that I put uh, them first into the, a breadboard and then into some LEDs with the resistors. You need resistors or else you will just swamp out the data transfer, breathe in, breathe out, and the switch, and then goes back here. Though. So it it's, uh, looks very messy here, but it's not that messy really. I can talk more about them later in another video. So. I just like to have this as optimal as possible, really. So now I think it's getting very mature, anyway. So, Sven has sent me this board, which is also a kernel switcher. So this one goes... Uh, it goes in line with the uh, keyboard. So it has holes on the back. So the keyboard pins goes in there, in the, from the main board then into this socket so let me get some light there maybe it helps in there through the socket and it has a controller at mega 328 so this is an arduino compatible controller actually so this one is only used for programming the uh, bootloader arduino bootloader but here you use the serial programmer, so I have ordered one, so I can play with it. He sent me this nice uh, cable harness. I think I have not asked, but I think this switch is for um, cutting power. So you don't power the Commodore 64 when you program something like that, or you want to power it when it's not in the machine or something. And then he has also sent me earlier, so as I have showed you. <laughs> has sent me kernel switchers and they have jumpers so you can hook any controller I was I'm going to have fun with these I'm going to make like a um, not a light organ but uh, like a, like some funny sensors try to switch just show that you can have fun that's the whole idea about this so so yeah but that's for another video so just want to say thank you for watching and uh, see you another time. Bye bye. This, by the way, this video is not edited. I just press pause on my uh, s 
my mobile phone while filming this. So I hope you like the format. Probably a bit, bit more incorrect words. Probably I've said things that I shouldn't say, but anyway. Hope you like it anyway. <laughs> bye bye.